everybody. I'm Susan. Welcome to Plateau Art Studio, Art for Kids. I'm here to help you along today with an art project, so let's see what we're working on today. Well, hi everybody. Well, today I have some whimsical birch trees, and uh, this is a really fun project. It's a little involved, but I think we can, I think everybody can do it all right. This picture right here is a artist uh, Marion Rose. I hope you can see it okay because it's just a picture um, I printed off uh, from the computer and she does such beautiful bright bold colors that's what she's known for is all her bold colors and and um, they're just really really striking and really pretty so that gave me the inspiration for this little project the whimsical birch trees and I'm gonna take you through this step by step and uh, this is not glued down. It's just, uh, we'll get to that later. <laughs> so I wanna make sure you have everything out. You need your glue, uh, three or four crayons, um, a little piece of cardboard that should be in your kit, a pair of scissors, and um, a kind of a large brush for the background. And make sure you've got your water and your paints and everything and you're all set up. All right, so let's start with the birch trees. So I'm going to set this aside and I'll bring this out. Now the birch trees, you have a piece of paper just like this. And I want you to take a pencil and I want you to draw about two fingers width. Now my fingers are bigger because you're probably about five, six, seven, eight years old and if you're a little bit older your fingers are going to be smaller than mine. So this is about, about the width is about an inch. So I just want you to draw some lines. They kind of need to be wavy. There are no straight lines in nature. There are no perfect straight lines in nature. So I just want you to go draw some fun little curve. You know, they can have little, little bit of a, a, a wave to them because when a tree grows, it's not just perfectly straight. They kind of have a little shape to them. So draw some lines and while you're doing that, you want about three or four birch trees and then I just want you to cut them out and we'll cut one so you can see and just stay as close to that line as you can this is a good way to practice with your scissors if you're really young it's just a really great way to practice hopefully you have some small scissors on hand if you don't your mom or dad can or sister or brother can help you out with this part so no worries. Okay, so you keep going. You put me on pause and I want you to draw your your lines and then cut out about three or four birch trees. Okay, and then you put me on pause and then come back and visit me when, uh, when you're ready for the next step. All right? Okay. All right, so now I've got my three birch trees and I want you to take a black marker or a black crayon and I want you to do the edge of the birch tree okay so this one I've done used a marker this one will use a crayon so you can see the difference and then I'm going to show you how to paint and decorate your birch trees so I kind of like that. I like the texture of that better than I like the marker. Okay, so we'll do this other side. Then you're going to do all three. And again, anytime you need to, put me on pause while because I'm just kind of going right through this project. So I'm going to show you how to do something. Then you put me on pause and you finish your birch trees for doing this part here so that the edges all have dark crayon okay so when you're done cutting everything out and you've done this part then visit me again you can always put me on pause and then come back to me okay so the next step 
we're gonna paint and we're gonna use this little piece of cardboard to paint our birch trees. And I did not get my black out. So hold on, let me get my black. All right, here, okay. Let me get my black. And I don't need too much of this. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this right here so you can see. I'm going to get the edge of this. And birch trees, here, let me put one that's finished. So you can kind of see. I start on the edge and pull across. That's kind of a lot of paint. So I just want to make kind of a little smears like that. Cross. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do that on the other side. There. Ooh, I like that. That's cool. All right, let's see if I can get that. Maybe I have too much paint. So just a tiny bit of paint. You just kind of want this little smear across. It doesn't take much paint at all. Okay. There. So now it's it's kind of it's kind of brushed and I didn't get very much paint at all. So I don't know if you can see where it's kind of smeared a little bit and creates what we call texture of the birch tree. Now I'm going to get a little more on there. Don't want a lot, so you can use your towel or a, or a paper towel for that. Now we're going to make little lines across because birch trees have these little lines in their bark. And it's that easy. Just a tiny bit, not a lot. Look at that. I just made a birch tree. So that's how easy it is. So the trick is, is just not very much paint. If you get a ton of paint on there, then it won't work the same. So just a tiny bit, and then make sure you can always dab some off and try it on a piece of paper before you do it on your birch tree. Okay, so there's our birch tree. Now we're gonna decorate it so it's whimsical. So what I did with this one to kind of match my background, I took some of these colors and I did like little circles, just a few. I took my yellow, made a zigzag. My green, I don't have green on this one, but we can make some little marks or something, just something really simple. And then I have blue, a little bit of blue in there as well. Maybe I dot in my circle. Let's get a couple little. There. Put some dots in there. All right, so there. There's my birch tree. Pretty cool, huh? That's pretty easy. So, um, course I say that but you, it's all about controlling how much black paint you have on that little piece of cardboard okay so that does make a really big difference so all right so once you get all your birch trees done I want you to set them aside so they'll dry okay so now I'm going to we're gonna paint the background so put me on pause while you finish your birch trees and then come back to me when you're ready to paint the background, okay? So I'll see you in a minute. All right. Okay, welcome back. All right, so now we're gonna paint our background. I will just dry this off, make sure there's no Okay, there we go. 
All right, and this part too does not take a lot of time. Um, it's very free flowing. Um, you don't have to use like a small brush to be really, really careful about what we're doing. So if you look at this one, the bottom is the ground. This blue represents water. <clears throat> the ground next to the stream. Maybe some green shrubs. They don't look like shrubs, but we're just using the color to represent what might be there. So then, and then, then the sky that changes this brilliant colors that kind of are like um, Marion Rose's colors that she uses in her art. So I'm gonna start with the yellow. I want a clean brush, use a large brush. And I'm gonna start with the yellow because I wanna keep my brush and my colors clean. So I'm gonna start from the top, pull down. I think you're working on watercolor paper. I just have a regular piece of paper. Watercolor paper, you can add water to keep that, that um, paint flowing like this. Okay, just keep pulling down. And then there's some faint little lines there to help you figure out where the colors go. Okay, so there's my yellow. Now, I don't know if I gave you orange or not. Um, I might have. You can use orange or you can just use red because red and yellow, they make orange. So now I'm going to go use my red. The same thing. I'm going to pull down. Okay, there's my red layer. Now I can go back and get some yellow. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? You're mixing those colors. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is dry my brush. I'm gonna, on my towel, I have a little towel here. I just got paint on my fingers. And actually I'm gonna wash my brush off a little bit. Because I want my yellow and I wanna pull down and blend this yellow into my, my red. Just like that, just a little bit. Okay, all right, so now I can take a little more red if I want. So now see I went from yellow to orange to red. You can pull up now and it will blend into your orange. Up. Okay, look at that. Ooh, that's really pretty. Okay, there we go. So now I've got my red, my orange, and then that beautiful yellow with little stripes of orange. So very, very bold and uh, just kind of on the keeping with um, Miriam, Miriam Rose's bold colors. Okay, now, green is a secondary color. Green is made with blue and yellow. So I don't wanna mix it and blend it into my red too much, because now I'm gonna do like what would be maybe some grass or shrubbery through there. Okay, so I'm gonna put my paint down Okay, there it is. Just kind of put it on my paper. Now I'm gonna pull up carefully because I don't want to blend too much into my red. Because green and red will be kind of muddy. So just a little bit. You can just dry your brush off too so you don't get too much paint in there. Just a little bit. And using a really large brush will make it look like grass. There we go. So I'm pulling up now, but little short strokes 
not long because I barely want it in my red. Can you see what's happening with the red? I hope I'm overlapping. Look how dark it is to there. It's kind of really pretty. Striking. So the more you do that. Okay, so now I've got my green in there. All right. Okay, what's next? All right, so now we want a little more of that red. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna wash my brush, dry it, wash your brush off, dry it on your towel or paper towels, okay? There we go, and a little bit of red, because now this is gonna be the ground next to the water. If you wanna mix your red and yellow, you can do that. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm going to mix a little red with my yellow. Okay, I'm going to stay away from the edge while I do this to get my color on there. Pulling down, but I'm not going against my green just yet. Okay. Okay, just get enough paint on there. Now I can go back and I can pull up into the very edge of my green. Just keep pulling up. Now you get what you want covered there. Against the edge. This could almost be considered kind of an abstract because it's nothing in it is real. You know, it doesn't look like the actual sky or bushes or shrubs. It's just the color that we're representing in there. Okay, what's next? My blue is next, yay. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put my color down. Actually, I'll just do this. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna paint that little stream right in there. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, so now I can do that and kind of use that paint that I put down, pull it up, keep pulling. If you run out of paint, with your brush, you can add a little bit of water because you're working with watercolor paper. And you can keep painting with that blue. Just keep pulling up. Little strokes right next to the color. There we go. And pull down towards the bottom. There we are. I want my I want more paint down here. Okay, there we are. Now the bottom part here. We're almost done with our background. We can go back to that the ground. So we have the water. Now we're gonna do the ground. Okay, which can be that just red or red and oh, I don't want to pick up that blue on the corner there. So I wash my brush, okay, and I'm just going to pull down once I get that all covered and then just very carefully on that edge pull up. I'm just taking that paint and pulling, pulling that paint up towards the water. Okay, now we have a really, because it just makes a really interest, isn't that interesting texture through that whole thing? You can see all the brush strokes when you paint that way. So it's just a really different way of putting your paint on to your canvas or your watercolor paper. Now, what I want you to do is um, set this aside and I'm gonna show you one more thing. This should dry pretty quick watercolor usually dries pretty quick on, so, all right. 
Okay, now, now that you have your birch trees done, you can also make little ones because you have all that extra paper that I gave you and you can make some little ones for branches like that. Okay, so we are going to, once your watercolor paper is um, dry, then what I want you to do is lay out your birch trees, turn them over. Come on. <laughs> and we'll glue them on. Now you might have three or four. I'm just gonna glue three. Okay. Oh, actually, that one goes this way. All right, so they are lengthwise, and just match up the top. If one of them hangs over, you can trim it after when we're done. Anything on the little branches or something. You can always trim the edges. And put our glue on. Here's number two. I'm going to put the bottom a little closer here. So now these are not growing out of the water, but we're only seeing part of the picture. So these are probably in the ground in front you know, because they're still pretty thick, so you don't really see the whole bottom. So it's kind of an abstract, whimsical piece of art. All right, this is the last one. And just remember, when you were working, when I was working on the background, you can always put something on pause join me when you're ready all right there's that one now you can make you can do another one and just cut pieces of it and then you can have um, little branches you can put just a few branches if you like I think it looks a little nicer so if you make another whole birch tree you can just cut little strips of it and they're just little funky pieces <laughs> you know so, um, anyway, yeah, you put as many or as little as you want. It's your piece, you decide. So there's another little branch. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is something kind of real different that, you know, we haven't done before. And like I said, if you have a piece you should probably lay them all out to figure out what you want and where they look nice for you. Um, you know, so, anyway. So you lay them out like a puzzle. And think, oh, I kind of like that. Oh, I like that one that overlaps. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> um, you know, so you could do something like that with a few branches. And maybe you want one lower coming out like that. And you can glue it all down and you've got a beautiful, whimsical birch trees. Very similar to um, Miriam Rose, her, her birch trees. If you remember, here's her picture. They're just so bright. I'd love to see these in person. And, and um, I bet they're just beautiful. So you can kind of see the little lines on the birch trees. We have them here in Washington and you can actually see the little lines that go across like we did here. So anyway, I hope you had fun with this project. It's a really fun project. So um, I will just see you next week for the next project. You guys have a great afternoon and I miss everybody. So bye bye. Well, hey everybody. I hope you had fun with that project today. I know I did. So tune in next week. We'll see what we have uh, a new project next week. Okay, bye-bye now.